drove to work nauseous every day. It wasn't a long drive, 10, 15 minutes, depending on traffic. But the closer I got, the sicker I felt. So much so that by the time I got to work, I had to park the car and sit and take a few deep breaths just to build up the resources for the day. Now, you're probably wondering what I was doing. And before I tell you, just imagine for a moment, you know, you're going through your program, you're working on your degree, and there's one class that you're required to take. And it also happens to be your least favorite class in the world. I think I just heard someone over here yell out statistics. Well, whatever it is, it actually gets worse because you also find out that the prof of that course is the most notoriously boring prof on campus. On top of that, you also discover that the room it's in, it's actually underground and there's no windows. You've been in that room and it feels like just a cold gray concrete bunker. And you get to class and there's one seat left, you go to it, and there's something bothering you and you look up and you notice that there's like a light flickering above your head. And right next to that, there's like a fan that it's clicking as well. You feel every part of you just tighten up and it's, it's your own private hell. Well, that's what it was like for me every day. Because at the time, I was working in an accounting firm. And yeah, I hated it. It was my own private hell and I wasn't even an accountant. At the time, I was an accounting student working through my 30 months of article time required to get my CA, now CPA, designation. And it was my personal hell. And I didn't know what else to do at the time. You know, and I'm not a quitter, so I stuck it out, finished my 30 months, did all the academic requirements, and got my degree. And then I quit the next day. And I'm wondering, what would you have done? Would you have stuck out those 30 months? Or would you have maybe transferred programs? Or even quit? Well, for me, go forward another 10 years. And it seemed like I had everything together. I was an entrepreneur. I owned three different businesses in three completely different industries. And I was pretty young at the time. I was like in my late 20s, early 30s, and like young considering the size of the businesses. You know, together we employed about 300 people. In fact, each one of those businesses was either at or almost at being in the top 1% of businesses in North America in terms of revenue. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Like, impressive even. Like I'm living the dream. Well, let's talk about my drive to work. And no, I, I wasn't nauseous, but I was in what I called robot mode. You see, I'd wake up early in the morning and drive the what's now 45 minutes or more likely an hour to work. And I live in Vancouver, so imagine Vancouver in like November or December, it's pitch black, and almost every day I'm driving the entire hour being serenaded by the sound of the windshield wipers on high. I'd get to work, and I was often the first one there, so I'd open the office, and the day was a blur of calls and meetings and employee issues, customer problems, crisis after crisis after crisis. At the end of the day, I'd lock up, often being the last one there, and drive the hour home, again in the dark, again with my windshield wipers on high. And it was when I finally got home, that's when I started living. You know, whether it was going out for a run, meeting up with friends, going for dinner. That's what I mean by robot mode. It wasn't until I got home that I started to live. I spent the days with my eyes closed, going through the motions of everything I needed to do. The reason was because I didn't actually love my businesses. I actually, I found myself, sometimes my values conflicted with what we were doing. I didn't use any of our products or services and I, I was just going through the motions of what I had to do. And then 2008 happened, the financial crisis. Now all of a sudden, not only, not only am I doing a bunch of work I don't love, I'm also fighting to save each of these businesses that were struggling financially. There was a real risk I could go bankrupt. And it was so bad, I remember I could barely sleep. Uh, if I woke up before like 
2 or 2.30 in the morning, I was actually relieved because it meant there was enough time for me to toss and turn in bed that I could maybe fall back asleep and get a couple more hours. But if I woke up after 3, I knew there was no chance I was getting back to sleep and I have to drag myself out of bed at what? on two or three hours sleep to face the next day. And there were real consequences, not just for me, but for all of the employees and their families who relied on the business and their salaries for their livelihoods. And those livelihoods were legitimately at risk. When was the last time you felt that way? When was the last time you felt stuck, frustrated, maybe even embarrassed about where you were in life, but you didn't know what to do about it because there were real consequences at stake. I, I think it's fair to say around that time I got very familiar with the flavor and, dare I say, bouquet of Pepto-Bismol. Well, fast forward another five years. I'd completely transformed my life. I'd exited all of my businesses. And because people ask, I, I like to say I didn't do as well as I would have liked, but much better than it could have been. Remember. I could have gone bankrupt. But I promised myself I'd take some time to actually figure out what I was passionate about. What did I actually want to do? And since I can't sit, st sit still very long, I started doing some consulting projects and I was ultimately asked to be a fractional CFO for a few startups in town, tech startups. And I saw the same thing every single time. Their books, their financial statements, were a complete disaster. And worse than that, the owners, the entrepreneurs, they didn't realize they were a mess, nor did they know how to actually read them or interpret them or do anything with them. It was the exact same thing at every single business. Coincidentally, around the same time, I went to go see a speaker. He was a finance speaker, and he was speaking about how banks look at financial statements compared to how uh, entrepreneurs look at financial statements. And he was a great speaker, and the room was full of entrepreneurs. He spoke fast, and he spoke technically. So much so that I had to use all of my accountant's brain just to keep up with what he was saying. And I knew the rest of the audience wasn't keeping up. And I know that because at one point, uh, he actually made a mistake on one of his formulas, and I, I put up my hand and I corrected him. And the whole room laughed. But it was actually a nervous laugh. It was, it was a laugh that was like, I know this stuff is important, but I don't understand what we're talking about or what we're doing. And after the talk, I was walking around. I heard all these entrepreneurs saying the same thing. They hated accounting. They didn't understand it, but they knew it was important for their business. And one of the guys in the room came up to me and said, hey, uh, can you help me put this in my business for me? because I know it's critical, but I just don't get it, and I don't like it. And that was an aha moment. It was the first aha moment in a series of aha moments that led me to what I'm doing today. Are you sitting down? Because today, I own an accounting firm. Don't worry, I don't actually do any accounting myself. I have a team that does the accounting, and they love it. Yes, there's people that love accounting. But I also love what I do. Because what I learned is that I love working with entrepreneurs. I love their passion. I love their energy. I love their vision. And I get excited working with them. I also figured out that I have an understanding of both being an entrepreneur and being an accountant. And that's very unique. And I have the ability to bridge the gap between the two. I believe my why, the reason I'm here, my way forward, is to help entrepreneurs change the world by helping them through their financial blind spot. And that's pretty exciting for me. But it's even more exciting than that. Because I have a way forward with my next business. I know what my next business is. I have a vision to completely transform how financial information is analyzed and delivered to entrepreneurs on a global scale. It's a paradigm shift in a way that does not exist today in any form. And that's a really big why. That's a really big way forward to me. And you could even call it a BHAG. If you've never heard that, it's a big, hairy, audacious goal. 
And when I look back, thinking about how did I get here, why am I excited about this BHAG of mine? There was a number of clues that, honestly, I didn't notice along the way that have led me here. And maybe if I had seen them, my path would have been a little simpler. And maybe those clues might resonate with you. Clue number one, a persistent negative state. Remember when I was going through my accounting degree and felt like this the whole time? What I didn't realize is I was laying the foundation for my entire future. What happens to you when you're in your accounting class or accounting job? Do you get stuck in a negative state or are you able to change your mindset so that you see it as the groundwork for what the future is that you don't know exists yet? Doing the work you have to do today so you can do the work you want to do tomorrow. Which would you prefer? A negative state or possibility in the future? Uh, clue number two, did I hear a complaint? I'm curious, what complaining conversations do you have or do you hear in your life with uh, other students, staff, colleagues at work? And more importantly, do you participate in those complaining conversations? Or are you able to step back and observe those complaining conversations through curiosity? Curious about what the root problem is so that maybe you can be part of the solution. Remember, I heard a lot of complaining conversations from entrepreneurs about accounting, and I'm now designing to solve that problem. And no, you don't have to be an entrepreneur to do that. You can design your life around solving the root problems other people have. Again, what would you prefer? Being part of the complaint or being part of the solution? Clue number three, one conversation. It only took one conversation for me to completely transform the trajectory of my life. Are you open to your next one conversation? Are you putting yourself in a position to have the next one conversation, whether that's an event, a class, hanging out with the right people, getting connected in the right areas? Are you open because if you're in a complaining state or a negative state, you can't be open to your next one conversation? And what would you prefer? Being in that negative state or being open to the next one conversation that could completely transform your life? Clue number four, struggles and setbacks. Struggles and setbacks are actually an essential element of the path to success. What happens to you when you encounter struggles and setbacks? I spent a lot of time pushing back against it. But I invite you to open your mind to embrace struggles and setbacks as an essential part of the path to success. We've probably all heard the saying, you know, a calm sea does not make a skilled sailor. Same thing. I spent a lot of time struggling, and that set me up for what I'm doing today, which is transforming an industry for the better. I ask you again, what would you prefer? Being stuck in the struggle, being stuck in the failure, or embracing it as an opportunity for unparalleled learning for your future growth? And finally, clue number five, finding passion amongst the pain. You know, think about like, I've been working in this element of accounting for a long time, yet I discovered that I love working with entrepreneurs. That gets me excited. I have fun, energetic. But it's still within the context of accounting. And so where are you when you're in the middle of something difficult? Uh, imagine you're working on a group project, and uh, it's a topic you don't like, but maybe you love being the quarterback, organizing people in their roles, uh, being the, the, basically the project manager. Or maybe you prefer doing the research. Maybe you love the writing. Maybe you just like ordering lunch and cracking jokes and keeping people motivated. Because I should tell you, ordering lunch, cracking jokes, and keeping people motivated is a very special talent. But whatever it is, are you attuned to when you're in flow, when you're in a moment of passion, even if the context isn't something you love? Because it's in the place of flow and passion that you can actually see the progress and the future and pull together and make a difference in the world around you. 
you know, I didn't know where I was going to end up. I didn't know how I was going to get here or what happened along the way. And maybe you're at a point where you don't know either. And that's OK. Especially as a student, you might be experiencing fear, anxiety, self-doubt, all of it. So today, I invite you to open your mind to a new way forward. I want you to imagine what your life could be like if instead of getting caught in a persistent negative state, you saw it as laying the groundwork for future potential. I invite you to imagine what your life would look like if instead of joining, uh, joining complaining conversations, you observe them with curiosity, again with the curiosity for how to solve them, solve those problems going forward. Imagine what your life would look like if you left yourself open to your next one conversation that could change the trajectory of your life. Imagine what your life would look like if you embrace struggles and setbacks as a necessary path to success. And imagine what your life would look like if you focused on the flow and the passion in everything you did. I invite you to a new way forward today that may actually lead you to finding your own big, hairy, audacious goal. Because I have no doubt with that, you will find tremendous success. Good luck, and thank you very much.